Times have changed. And for those of you who've been in the workforce for a while, do you notice there's a difference in the worker of today? Here's what we know. Gallup did a survey. 70% of employees are disengaged. In other words, they're doing just enough not to get fired. Some of you get, get I know. I know some of them. And that might be you. You might be like, oh, my boss sucks, man. Ah, I'm already looking. You know, remember that commercial from a while ago? I think it was a Monster.com commercial. The guy is late to a staff meeting and he's like, sorry guys, I was just at a job interview. Nailed it, you know? I'm like, oh wow. All right, that's a disengaged person. Now what does that cost you, whether, you know, for, from a team perspective or from a leader perspective? It costs about $2,000 per employee for, in terms of productivity, in terms of cost for you. So how many people do you manage? How many people report to you? Multiply that by $2,000 and you can see what disengagement costs. Something has gone wrong, something is different. And, and so I think what we're seeing is the mindset that worked for generations has shifted. As millennials and Gen Xers are in this, are kind of in the prime season of some of this, this is shifting. And so one of the things you can do is continue to say that an A-track player is the way to go. We go, hey, listen, here's how things are now. What do we have to do to adapt to it? So let's talk very quickly. There's a case study here. So um, in the late 1990s, GM was very excited about a car called the Pontiac Aztec. Okay, this car rolled out. There was going to be a car that revolutionized cars. It was going to be an active kind of vehicle. This is the, uh, the concept car that they built to get people excited about. It. And there was actually quite a bit of buzz about the vehicle. The problem happened when they debuted the actual, vi the actual car, which looked a little bit more like this. Okay. Now, if you bought into Pontiac Aztec here, my job isn't to make you feel bad about it. Actually, I think in some ways it was ahead of its time. But did you see there's a little bit of a difference from what the car was supposed to look like, right, to what the car ended up looking like? So here's what happened. GM kind of went in and said, well, listen, if we're going to make money on this car, you're going to have to do this, 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 and this. So they built the car in a minivan platform and had a kind of a, a underpowered engine that burned gas a lot. And it wasn't the kind of performance car that it was kind of promised to be that people were expecting. Well, what happened? Take a look at this. So the, um, the chairman of GM was quoted as saying that this was what the, the project manager of the car said about the, about the development process. Look, we've all made up our minds that this car is going to be a winner. It's going to astound the world. I don't want any negative comments about this vehicle, none. Anybody who has bad opinions about it, I want them off the team. Right? So if you work for this person and you're working for this company and you're kind of thinking, uh, I don't know about that car. How many of you are going to say something about it if you go, wait, is my job on the line here? So if I say, I don't know if that's going to sell the kind of, you know, sell in the way that we think it needs to, I'm not saying jack, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sitting there going, okay, you got it, boss. What do you want me to do? I'm good. Right? And what happens, though, is that they make cars that no one buys. Right? And, it, and so the, uh, the Aztec was made for four years. It lost GM a lot of money. And if you'll notice, Pontiac does not exist today. Okay, so that's what happened. That was an old school mindset which said, listen, this is what we're going to do. You're going to do exactly as I tell you. I don't need your feedback. I don't need your sharing. I don't need nothing. Just do what I tell you. Now, sometimes I know there are some employees you really don't want their input. I get that, okay? <laughs> like, wow, that, where did that come from? Okay, but you still need to have them engaged in the team. So we're going to talk about the realities of that and because you, know, you don't want this to happen here. So before we do that, we do want, I do want to spend some time talking a little bit about what do your people want? Right? What is it as people that they want out of life? And as a leader, it'll help you as you're starting to figure out how do I develop a high performance culture and team? The first one is we are all driven by the need for connection. All of us, we're relational beings, right? We have friends, we have family, right? We, we, we like most of our friends, we like some of our family, you know? Um, Right, we look for, for companionship. I mean, we are built for this. I mean, think of the really good times in your life. Don't they usually involve people? Think of the really bad times in your life. Don't they usually involve people? Yeah. We're driven for the need for connection. And just because we're driven for that need outside of work, that doesn't change when we go into work. Your employees, the people that work for you, that report, for you, report to you, want that sense of connection as well. And so a high performance work culture has something that's connection as a centerpiece of it. And we're gonna talk about how that's created. Um, the other thing that we're driven by, right, is 
uh, for our life to have meaning and purpose. I love this quote by a man named Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book, Man's Search for Meaning. And Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor. Right? I mean, he went through these horrors, and he came out of it feel, it sound more optimistic about things than ever. Because he said, life is about meaning. And so your employees want to feel connected and they want to have meaning. Just like you do. You want to feel like, your life, like the, what you're doing matters. And we saw in that other clip, did that guy feel like what he was doing mattered? No. So what was he doing? Just the bare minimum, right, to get by, to not get fired. So how do you create that connection? How do you create that meaning? We're going to show you a model and how, you, and how to do that. Again, because a high performance culture is evident when everyone works together towards a common purpose. Have you ever worked on teams where it just seemed like all of you guys clicked? Yeah. You know, we watch, when you watch sports, you can tell when there's a team that they are all in together. They may not like all of, like each other, you know, necessarily, but they respect each other and they know. And you see those championship teams, oh my gosh. And then you see other teams, you know, like the Cleveland Browns or something like that, where you go, huh. Okay, well, good luck with that, guys, you know, right? Because they're not, there's something in the culture that's not working. So how we can tell that this is working is at the top of the pyramid, you see there's something called common purpose. So when everyone is working together, moving in one direction, that's the sign that we see that we have a high performance team, that you are leading a high performance team when everyone is in and they're all in.